Randall Anderson at the Epitome Institute. Randall comes from Canada and he brought this cold weather too. That's why we're all dressed really <laughs> yeah, warm. I took an opportunity of interrupting this artist. Uh, I'm calling him an artist, but he does a lot of things um, to talk to us. And uh, he's still got one of his tools that he's using to cut aluminum. Mm -hmm. Randall, welcome to Texas. Oh, thanks. And uh, this is your first visit to Texas, San Antonio? I was here in August. Okay. Went quickly. But this is your first exhibition of your yeah, work, so installation of your work? That's right, yeah. Okay, so how did this come about? Um, through knowing Meg years yeah. and years ago. We once did a residency together, mm -hmm. now getting on to about 12, 11, 12 years ago. And, uh, I think actually it came about really through conversations on Facebook. No alcohol sure. was involved. I'm curious at how this Epitome Institute came about. Alcohol. <laughs> no, no alcohol. Okay. She, she was running this project and she asked me if I'd be interested in Wonderful. doing Wonderful. So. Well, we're really excited that you're here. When I yeah. saw your, your proposal, I was excited mm. uh, being a painter, seeing color. I'm also excited about the materials that you've chose to use. Uh, what you're um, using is aluminum siding, something that I just recently removed from my house to see the wood. But you've given it a different twist and you're actually challenging the viewer to look at these things differently. Um, why aluminum foil? I mean aluminum foil. Aluminum siding. Uh, I think mainly because it's it's present everywhere it seems to be even in doing a research on the internet it's popular in europe it's still popular over. oh it's very popular but i i like the uh kind of formal aspect of it present in our environment everywhere and uh -huh. how it how people relate to it covering up things with it right, right and living right. with it You're covering the wall covering the wall yeah. yeah so, so you don't like, have to paint the wall again, but you're painting I'm the painting siding. it. Yeah, so I'm adding a I'm another tweaking conceptual it. idea. Yeah, exactly. I like the a kind of a term I think about is vernacular formalism. That's just what I how I look at things and the materials I use, whether it's aluminum siding or bulletin boards, another project I've worked with, and wallpaper. Right. These things that are visual parts of our environment that people don't necessarily think about as affecting their understanding of their world. Mm -hmm. and, so yeah. it's also decorative. It's decorative, yeah. You know, it, when you put something on the wall, you're, you know, painting is basically yeah. decorative. That's what most people look at. It's an attempt at So you've got to match your sofa or not. Yeah, exactly. You know, this alum yeah. aluminum siding goes well with all kinds of beige and gray and purple. Can you talk a little bit about how uh, materials affect the viewer in general? Like what you use, you know, the, there's a sensibility that, you know, yeah. that we know when we look at materials, they associate something else. They have baggage. Yeah, materials have baggage. And I think that I'm interested in materials that carry more baggage relevant to the public's experience mm -hmm. of the world. When I studied early on in school to be a painter, as soon as I graduated, I never, I didn't make a painting for 20 years. Wow. And that's when I started working with a wallpaper that I designed because I thought this paint, every time I pick up a brush, I engage this history of painting, which didn't really interest me that much. Mm -hmm. So why not create a medium that carried content I thought more relevant? So I used this wallpaper, almost like paint. I'd construct things with it. Mm -hmm. I'd collage with it. Mm -hmm. And the aluminum siding is very much the same thing. Same concept. It's just it's the same part idea. part of shelter. And it's not the uh, sort of academic high art kind of materiality mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you'd expect, although, you know, today in contemporary art anything goes, but still I think that the public relates differently to it when it's coming from their experience. Mm -hmm. I like uh, a quote from William Burroughs, which I, to paraphrase, is that art is about showing people what they don't know, they already know. And I like that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, you know, starting with what they already know but haven't thought about. They don't know they know this. They don't know they know this. That's <laughs> right. They don't know they, you know, this stuff isn't an accident. It's yeah. designed. It's yeah. 
It's mm -hmm. evolution. Exactly. That's what's underneath it draws so, us all together. So I think it's kind of a, a way of bringing people into my work. And I like the idea of that public completing the work. So I kind of like do this, but then I, I have to let go. And mm -hmm. then it's the next part. And that's, I think, you know, where we hope the art part is. It's kind of floating out mm -hmm. here. And it's not mm -hmm. something that, that I can control. Or, yeah, sky, it's some bait. It's a moment yeah, and it's, it's fleeting. Moment. So, so I like materiality that's coming from, you know, for lack of a better way of putting it, kind of a low art or mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, you know, it's just mm -hmm. common experience. Mm -hmm. You spoke a little bit before the camera was rolling about uh, growing up in a trailer mm -hmm. in Canada and your parents living there, selling the house to live in a trailer. Uh, how, did, how has that affected uh, what you do now with this, with the materials you use. Well, in particular with this material, um, if you look at trailer parts and trailers, and I, I can't pass a trailer park without taking pictures, they're very formal thing, things in your mm -hmm. environment. And I never thought about it for a long time. And then I started realizing that they're really very sculptural and organized. They're like Donald Judd mm -hmm. kind of arrangements, <laughs> right, of these things. And each one has a slightly different character. Yeah. And it's all siding. Usually it's some kind of siding. Uh -huh. And uh, what I also like is there are often colors that I relate to. Because mm -hmm. people will paint them pinks and greens and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it just informed my understanding of that visual world around me, living in a trailer park. And it's a trailer. It's like mm -hmm. socio, you know, socio you economically. This is like the underclass. Yeah. So, so I think I've always had that element in my work too, the kind of sense of class. Were you always aware of that? I think early on, yeah. I've always been aware, and I was very interested in, you know, uh, the Frankfurt School Marxist theory and all of that mm -hmm. because I understood that was my class. That's where I came from. Although I was in academia, mm -hmm. I always had an uncomfortable feeling in that environment. Yeah. So it seems like that was something that, because you grew up with, you, know, that you had a flexibility. Yeah. You got wheels, you can move, you're grounded. Uh, you were talking about you're moving a lot. Yeah, I like, uh, I move a lot, it seems. I tend to, I don't know why. I'm just you get bored on. with where you're I think you're I working. get bored, and I like transitional, I like that growth thing. Yeah. But scary. I, yeah, I have it to is. Say, Every I get time tired you of go it. somewhere, you know, you don't know what is going to be safe or the roof is going to cave in exactly. and things like that. You're going to have enough space for your stuff. Yeah, yeah. Those are issues that we all, you know. I think it's just part of how I make art too. Comes the transitional comes into it, like doing the facade. Mm -hmm. Here, it's a space people move by. I like that feeling. I used right. to say that. I wanted to make art that people could, you know, almost turn their back on and uh -huh. ignore. Uh -huh. that, and I didn't understand what that was, but it's just that they don't stand in front of it and have the moment I'm looking at art. It's more right. about in passing, it still Good. gets there, yeah. you know, and I, I value that moment. And then if they're walking in opposed to driving, yeah. they, they experience so it's I just did a big uh, public art piece in Vancouver in Canada on the west coast that's a uh, pedestrian walkway and it's cast concrete. So they can't avoid and it's it. it's just this huge mm -hmm. project that people are constantly going by, yet it's visual information in their environment so it seeps in. And but if they're on a cell phone, and they're just <laughs> they're, <laughs> that's true. They're not aware of these. But things. next time they go. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> idealistic. Yeah. That's what what you're doing, and I, I think about uh, uh, your proposal to put the the painting on on the aluminum siding on the outside and everything. It's a tactileness. We know what the materials are. I shop at Home Depot. I know what there's out there in materials. I know what they're made out of. But we live in a technical age where everybody's on their cell, they're mm. in front of their iPads, they're on a the computer. It brings a certain amount of touch involved and also that you made it by hand. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you think uh, technology relates to what you're doing, if at all? I mean, do you think it's kind of like a, a backlash to technology? 
to try to get people to think or because it doesn't seem like you do these renderings on a computer but they're very yeah. architectural and you're using architectural materials and stuff like that but you're making you're using tools you yeah. got uh, messed up fingers yeah. from, from all the hard labor <laughs> True. That's something that we're losing touch with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we are. I, I like to make things. I and like is that, that part of our and evolution? I've, maybe. I mean, I've done media work. I've done websites as works of art. Mm -hmm. Yet, uh, I always come back to the physical world. Right. And, uh, you know, I like the physicality of the, the siding, for example. Mm -hmm. It's very, almost visceral to me. It's very present. Right. And to do something, the way I paint it, creates, you know, it's an aberrant kind of rupture. It's a rupture in people's experience. They don't expect that. So even if they're on the cell phone, they're yeah. going to go, whoa, what's that? <laughs> yeah. And maybe they move on. And then, but it's in Or there. maybe they snap a picture and go, I can, right. I'll think about this later. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. I also wanted to ask about uh, the painting aspect, because I'm a painter and mm -hmm. you're dealing with surface. Um, would you consider that a mural? Yeah, it's cer certainly. I mean, it's it's within that conversation about what is a, it's a visual thing in the environment yeah. on a wall. That's yeah. mural like. But so siding, it's like the side of someone's house. Why not do that to your right. siding? I mean, people. And there yeah. are artists that do that. Yeah. Whether you want yeah, yeah. it or not, they'll yeah. do it. You know, yeah, the graffiti sure. artists. Oh, yeah, the graffiti. I love graffiti. When you put together this mural or painting, um, what are the processes that you you do? How you prepare the surface, and how do you work? If, you know, planning it out, putting it together. Yeah, in this case, it's all put up first, and then I'm painting it, and that's because of this, the building being out of square and stuff like that. Right. But ideally, I like to lay things out and paint them, and then construct them. Like these paintings mm -hmm. are done like that because I like the idea of building a painting as opposed to painting a painting. Mm -hmm. It's like painting is somehow almost too romantic for me. And, too romantic. And doing yeah. a smushy Romance painting. Romance got like, a bad name. I just can't allow myself to it's do that. It's not macho enough. I don't know. I like, I think the, that's what I like the constructing <laughs> part. And even when I do painting on canvas, I use tape and mm -hmm. it's like I build it as opposed to paint it. I never say I paint paintings. Yeah. I, I build paintings. You build paintings. I like that. Yeah. Well, that, that's a real Home Depot type of and, hardware yeah, exactly. guy thing. I think I think you, your work is going to be really well recepted, uh, it, accepted in, in, in San Antonio, <laughs> Texas, because yeah. of a lot of people are familiar with those materials. Oh, yeah, and the they know paint, how they work. And it's from Home Depot, so there you go. Right. And there are yeah, people that live in trailers that are going to yeah. come and view the work. Uh, and then they're going to have their own vision and you know, hey man, how'd you do that? What kind of tools did you use? Yeah. You talk shop. Exactly. Well, you know, I, I, start, I started out adult life as a, first a carpenter and then I made furniture and then I became a diesel mechanic. And then one day I climbed out of the grease pit and went and studied art. <laughs> and I built race cars and stuff. So it's like, that informs how I make art. Right. And I teach art and the one thing I tell my students is, there's a lot of people out there who can do this. But the only thing that's going to make a difference is that in the work itself is that it's yours and your experience has to somehow be there. So the question I always ask them, and it's hard for young people, is who are you? Especially on the media landscape always working on them, the question mm -hmm. is who are you? Because that's the only thing that's going to make a difference. It took me a lot of years to bring this content into my work. Sure. And for the longest time I didn't think it was there. Yeah, yeah, you always, it, you have it's to always have friends, like in, as far as the trailer self -doubt goes. Self-doubt is good. I'm doing sculptures that are on utility trailers that I've hauled all across North America and stuff. And one day a friend said, you know, it's no surprise you do that. You grew up with wheels under your house. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that. What I'm intrigued by, the colors and mm. what you choose. Uh, I like the colors that you choose. When I paint, sometimes I get the rejects from the hardware store. Oh yeah, yeah. Because somebody else didn't want them, but they speak to me, and I'm right. thinking maybe they, they were trying to get some, something that was denying that, and that was just too close to home, so they didn't want to go there with that color. Ah. So I take it home and use it, and then somebody says, oh, I hate that color. Why do you hate that color? That was my grandmother's color on her kitchen wall and she abused right. me mm -hmm. so 
Is there uh, a background on why you pick these colors? Did you have a palette of usually those colors that you use? You know, my color choices are just almost, they're almost arbitrary. And I don't really? think about them much, you except just want they, they you come up. You have to pick something. No, I, I have to fill that area. Yeah. And, you know, I do, do you have, get what's on sale? I know my color theory. Yeah. And I go and I look at the paint right. chips and I go, I like that color. Yeah. I like that color. And then when making something, I realized, oh, they don't really look good together, but I like the way they don't look good together. Oh, okay. And I kind of so let it go. So you're making an aesthetic just, judgment. I try not to get, it's almost like, I need to fill that area and there's that okay. paint there and I will use it and then go, it kind of sets off a cascading effect of like damage control. Whoa, that's bright. Now what can I possibly put yes, inside that? Yes, it's a process. It's like pull but one, in the, put uh, one piece here and then yeah. react to that piece. But in the there. end, I like, I like the uh, bright. I like saturated color. Yeah, like, it, it's, like this terracotta It's red. not, you know, in, a, in, a, in again, it's not what you'd normally see because it's too out front. It and pops. It pops, and I think I respond to that pop. It's happy. I like the happiness. It's of happening. It. <laughs> yeah, I. It's like yeah, somebody it's driving. Colors. Whoa! What's that? What yeah. was that? Was that an advertisement? No, I don't see no advertisement. But it looks yeah. like it, it. It got my attention when you put red and black together or red and yeah. white. It's going to get the eye. Exactly. And a lot of people want that for. It's got that graphic, a graphic punch to it. Right. And you know, I could make all kinds. It's almost like though, if I start thinking about it too much, then I start then feeling like it. a designer. And I don't want to be a designer. I don't want to get, you know, oh, this color yeah. really needs <laughs> to be this. As soon as I start, I start doing that, and maybe a lot of paint, painters do that, but I feel like it's too manipulated almost. It's, I've done things where I just, I t take my colors and I'll put a little yeah. spinner thing. Yeah. And oh, I'll like David Bowie Yeah, did? I'll spin it and yeah. go, okay, I'm going to put that color there. Ah, I see. Sometimes it's, it works fine. Yeah. And it creates those moments of Randomness. damage control. Like, that doesn't work. How am I going to fix that? What can wow, I put yeah. there? So. Yeah. so there's no psychological reason behind it. I, I overanalyze everything and well, just I have it. Uh, I, I relate to this color because it reminds me of this, but I don't know why I picked it at first, but then when I lay it out and I say, okay, this color brings up this memory, this yeah. color uh, conjures this, and uh, how do they all relate? And that's an expression of myself. I guess that's a romantic idea. Yeah, it, but you know, I, I like the idea that well, you see people, they'll paint their bathroom a garish pink or something, right? Right. And they'll have some left over, and then they'll paint the pots on their front porch that color in a and chair. Like, I know and you guys, color that's not right, is. but they really like that color. <laughs> and that's totally relevant. Okay, that's that. not me. I don't do that. Well, <laughs> yeah. I keep all my colors in my studio. Oh, yeah. They don't see bad. Well, I'm really excited about your upcoming show and when it opens. And I hope you come back again to San Antonio because yeah, yeah, I, I want to keep tabs on hmm. what you do. And, um, is there anything else you want to say about your work? I think that covers a lot of ground. It covers a lot of ground. Yeah. It's fascinating stuff. Okay. Thank you. Thanks.